Hello everyone and welcome to a game that I consider an absolute privilege to share with everyone. Uh, it was played a few days ago in round 7 of the Vlissingen Open in Netherlands uh, between uh, these two gentlemen, between uh, Thomas Bertsen and Shreyas Royal. Uh, Thomas being an international master, Shreyas Royal being uh, a FIDE master, also the, the youngest ever uh, FIDE master uh, in England. And uh, we've already checked out one game uh, by Bertsen. Uh, he faced Magnus Carlsen. It was a, it was a bullet game uh, in the uh, uh, that was played on Leeches. So if you haven't seen that, also do check it out. Uh, I will put a link to it in the description below if you want to see. Uh, but what made me actually even um, uh, you know uh, uh, dig up this game is that uh, Howard Staunton uh, posted it on Twitter. Not the real Howard Staunton, that would be really weird, uh, but uh, someone um, uh, sort of uh, uh, honoring him with the account. And when, when there's a great game being played like this, um, uh, he will, of course, uh, uh, post it on Twitter. And I'm very glad that he did, and I'm very glad a lot of you guys have uh, tagged me on it, uh, uh, so it, it uh, catches my attention. Even even though I'm pretty sure I, I would have seen it, uh, a game like this w would not escape, um, uh, you know, uh, my, my attention. Uh, so let's dive straight into it, and then we are going to. Um, uh, well, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it to you, but uh, you, you guys will be amazed by this one. Uh, so Bertsen has the white piece, and he opens with e4, as we have already announced that the Evans Gambit will be on the board. So e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. We have bishop to c5, the uh, Joko Piano, and now the strongest move in the position, pawn to b4. The Evans Gambit is on the board, and black counters the Gambit by accepting it, as that is the best way to do it. So bishop captures, pawn to c3 and the bishop to a5 and now just d4 and if you've seen my um, uh, sort of a tutorial video on how to play the Evans Gambit we have covered many of the lines this line is included uh, and I will also include a link to that in the description below if you are hearing about the Evans Gambit for the first time do check it out as it um, uh, well will lead you uh, you know through some uh, elementary lines so, so you can start playing it with white but here comes a line that I have not covered uh, and it's an extremely rare move Move. I've seen it played in similar positions. I've seen it played in in the King's Gambit. I've seen it played uh, in uh, well, basically in um, some open games where the bishop is developed on c4, controlling this diagonal, and that is pawn to b5. And the idea is you want to give back one pawn at uh, make uh, this light square bishop not as powerful as it usually is. So it's not a new move. It has been played before, but only in a handful of games. Uh, we have bishop captures on b5, uh, and now knight captures on d4. Uh, the c3 pawn is pinned so you can't capture back and also now the bishop is hanging so you kind of have to play knight captures on d4 so knight captures e captures and here uh, Bersen just castles and now uh, white uh, or rather black should consider uh, just knight to, e, knight to e7 and castles but he goes for the bold d captures on c3 grabbing the pawn and now he has a, a pass pawn on c3 but will he be able to uh, hang on to it uh, that's uh, the, the real question uh, and there is is only one move in the position that is good for white and the one that uh, a lot of people might miss uh, because it kind of wastes the tempo uh, but it is bishop to c4 and you don't really waste the tempo because black also wasted a tempo grabbing the pawn here so now the bishop uh, is on the diagonal where it belongs uh, attacking the uh, weak f7 square and it's very hard to continue the game here for black yeah, for example, uh, if you go for the knight f6, which is a natural way to develop your pieces, just e5. And there's no good square for the knight. If you go back with knight to g8, then just queen f3, threatens checkmate, and also the rook on a8 is hanging. And if you try the, uh, well, the idea that usually works when e5 is played, sort of d5 attacking the bishop, just e captures, and after d captures on c4, there's f captures on g7. You don't have time to trade because this comes with check, so rook g8, now queen a4 check, picks up the bishop, and the black just gets obliterated. So that's one way to do it. And also if you try something like d6 to prevent e5, then the immediate queen h5 also wins just threatening checkmate and the bishop is now hanging. So that's why I said it was a really, really bold move uh, capturing on c3, but black kind of makes it work. Knight to e7 uh, by Shreyas. Uh, and now uh, white plays rook to e. I'm just kidding. Of course, white played bishop captures on f7. We do not want to see the black king castling. And also it's not really a peace sacrifice since the bishop on a 
5 also will hang. So king captures on f7, queen to h5 check, king to g8, and now queen captures on a5. We have h6, and now black is saying, all right, uh, I'm up material. If we count the pawns, I have six pawns, white has only five pawns, and if I can play king h7 and bring my rook into the game, I should be okay, And if, uh, especially if the pawn can survive, but it's very unlikely it's already attacked twice. So uh, uh, basically it's going to be equal material. Knight captures on c3, king to h7, and now bishop to a3. We have d6, and now rook a to d1. Uh, we have bishop to b7, fianchettoing the bishop, uh, pawn to f4, and now rook to e8, preparing to move the knight and put pressure on this e4 pawn, and now bishop back to b2, as the bishop really does belong uh, on this diagonal, and some rook lifts in the future might be possible going for that g7 pawn. So queen d7, and now rook to d3. We have knight to g8, uh, and now we have pawn to e5. Makes sense, as of course the pawn uh, cannot be captured, and also you take away the uh, f6 square for the knight, but now just knight back to e7 as the f5 square was weakened. So knight to b5, putting pressure on c7, knight captures on c7 would be excellent for white, and here we have queen to c6. And now I'm sure you guys are wondering what happens if knight captures on c7, will of course queen captures on g2 checkmate. I was only kidding, I know none of you missed that. So here rook to g3, defending checkmate, uh, and um, uh, there you, you could also play something else, for example, uh, you could play something like rook to d to defend the checkmate this way, and this is in fact the stronger move, uh, but rook to g3 is definitely in the style of old masters, as both of them uh, sort of uh, got into the mood, and especially when uh, Shiraz Rael played that b5 move, uh, of course they uh, they both agreed that they will play this in the style of old masters, and no pawns uh, uh, will be counted. So here, knight to f5, attacking the rook, but uh, Bertsen just says, uh, what about? knight to f5. I have a knight to d4 now. And now you can't capture my rook because uh, I would capture your queen. So here knight captures on d4. This uh, this is pretty much forced. Uh, bishop captures on d4 and now d captures on e5. We have bishop captures now attacking the g7 pawn and the rook to e7. Shiraz uh, really finding all the right moves and the defending... Um, uh, truly valiantly. We have queen to a3 now, attacking the rook, and now comes rook to d7, getting the rook out of the way. Uh, here, uh, there is a very tricky move for black, uh, that is queen to b6 check. Now, you might be wondering, what's the point of this? You know, we never just want to deliver a check just uh, just because we can. But here, point is after queen to b6 check and king to h1, there is queen to a6. Uh, and now with white captures, you just checkmate white with queen captures on f1. So white really has to decide whether to trade queens or to move the queen back with queen to c1, uh, which of course uh, uh, kicks the queen away from uh, from 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 such an active square. Uh, so you always have to look for such ideas. So, you know, when your opponent has not played king to h1 and the f4 four pawn has been moved, you have to look for resources like this. So okay, rook to d7. Uh, we have h3 now. So you don't have to worry about any back rank issues in the future. And now rook to g8, adding another defender. So now this rook can move. Rook to c1, chasing away the queen. And now comes queen to e4. Uh, also possible is just queen to a6 um, uh, to trade the queens. But uh, even though it's uh, the best that the engine recommends, uh, for example, captures, captures. Uh, and now rook to a3 attacks the bishop. Uh, black will just lose a lot of material. You're going to lose this pawn. You're going to lose this pawn. And it would be a miracle if black uh, holds this. Yes, the bishops are of opposite color, but if you if you can trade a rook, maybe you can hold it, but if not, uh, very unlikely. So, okay, queen to e4. Black, of course, wants to keep the queens on the board, and now rook captures on c7. Rook captures and the bishop captures. And here, uh, royal finds g5. And it's a spectacular move that can only be bested if um, uh, Bertsen finds that one uh, particular move, uh, the only move that wins the game. So feel free to pause the video here and try to win this position for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this brilliant, brilliant uh, maneuver. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, bishop to e5. We can even do it in slow motion as it's uh, so strong. Look at this, bishop to e5. Uh, what bishop to e5 does is that it takes away uh, the e7 square uh, from the black queen. So you are no longer covering the e7 square. So uh, queen to e7 check becomes possible. And also you take away the g7 square from the, from the rook. So black cannot shield the king 
with king to g7. So how do you stop queen e7 check? Uh, there's just no good way to do it. Here, rook to e8 is played. This does prevent queen e7, but now queen captures on a7. Grabbing the pawn. Now, finally, white is up material. Now, white is up two pawns. And now, even the, the a4 pawn can start marching forward. And the real question is, why doesn't g captures on f4 work? Uh, and of course, if you are wondering about that, it is rook to g7 check. And now you can see that there really isn't all that much you can do after king to h8. Um, uh, it's just game over uh, but uh, you still have to play it very carefully and that's why I decided to show it because uh, it seems like you can just move the rook anywhere and it's going to be winning for you for example you can capture this open up a discovery and it's winning uh, uh, but after rook captures on e5 you're still going to have to work uh, for your meal and especially if you try something like rook to e7 check to pick up the rook uh, there, there's the very nasty king g8 and now after rook captures on e8 check uh, now you can play king to f7 and all of a sudden uh, the win in no longer exists because checkmate is being threatened and also the rook is hanging so uh uh, you, you 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 would have to be very very careful here uh but the uh, point is the the real idea after g captures on f4 is rook to g7 king to h8 and now bishop to d4 this is the star move and uh, it seems that the the uh the uh, 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 white's dark square bishop is uh, truly the star player of this game now there is no defense uh, wh whatever you play it's uh, you just get destroyed because there are no tactics um, uh, that existed in the previous line uh so uh, uh in Instead, after queen captures on a7, we have rook to e7, guarding the bishop, but now queen to b8, check, going after queen to h8, and now there is no saving this position for black. Rook to d7 was played, uh, trying to get that rook into the attack, but it is much too late. Queen to h8 with check, king to g6, queen to g8, check, king to f5, or h5, doesn't really matter, ends the same, and now rook captures on g5, the brilliant, brilliant finish, uh, and it was in this position, unmoved, 36, uh, that uh, Shreyas Royal resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. I know it seems like more moves have been played and it usually does when we check out an Evans Gambit game because we cover uh, a lot of really cool lines. So, you, you know, you, you get this illusion that the game lasted longer, but in fact, it was only 36 moves. And here you resign because after H captures on G5, you of course don't play Queen captures on G5 because if you do this, then King E6 and now Black escapes, you are just down a rook. Uh, but after... Uh, this capture is just uh, g4 and this is now checkmated there is no square for the black king so truly truly wonderful queen covering g6 and e6 bishop covering f6 that's it the king is completely boxed in and that's game uh, so yeah, after rook captures on g5, uh, Shrasrael resigned the game and a brilliant, brilliant victory uh, for Thomas Bertsen uh, in round 7 of this uh, wonderful, wonderful tournament. And uh, it uh, almost um, uh, got him all the way up to the top. Uh, he uh, ended in, in shared second place with 7 out of 9. Uh, the tournament was won by Harsha uh, Bartakoti with 8 out of 9, which is truly, truly spectacular. And Shrasrael, I believe, finished on 6.5 out of 9, which is also um, uh, truly incredible. If he had won that game he would have seven and a half out of nine uh which um uh, w would be incredible he would he would have a, a you know a so so second place uh, uh behind harsha and uh well he he was incredibly close but uh you know this was this was truly a spectacular game so i am very very glad they played it and to play such a game of course it takes two uh if uh, uh if uh shiraz royal did not play such a bold uh, move, uh, move six with pawn to b5 uh, we wouldn't have such a rich game to enjoy so also kudos to him for uh, you know continuing the game in the style of old masters even in 2022 uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank uh, gabriel rodriguez ivan sterling uh, john austin andre schrade and dixit varma for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and if you haven't do check out Bertsen's game against Magnus uh, first link in the description below uh, see you soon